everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm actually going to be painting on this ukulele here. Now this little instrument here used to belong to my friend Matt but he was going to throw it out and he just decided to ask if I wanted it and if I wanted to paint on it or just do something or whatever and I could keep it and I said yes because that is a great idea and I actually did something pretty similar a little while ago where I painted on a guitar so this was going to be really fun. Now before we begin painting, I actually have to take off some things off this guitar just so that I can prep the surface and begin painting. And that includes taking off the strings here as you can see. And that was pretty easy, I just like unwound it and you know, took the strings off. Now I do also have to take off the little knobs and stuff, but I'll do that later. Right now I just want to get into some of the uh, cracks and crevices here and just give it a little bit of a wipe down with a uh, wet wipe just so that uh, any sort of dust that has collected in the surfaces is removed. After this, I have actually sanded it a little bit just to rough up the surface so that it's not glossy anymore. And then I am adding a nice coat of primer. The primer I'm using is just my Liquitex Gesso. I love this stuff. I love using it because it helps to prepare the surface for me to paint on. And it leaves a nice sort of white uh, blank slate for me to paint over the top. And the colors look really nice and vibrant. Now you may have noticed there are a few holes in this. And that's because he used those holes to mount to the wall. And I want to fill up those holes with a little bit of wood filler. As you can see here, I've placed it in the holes. And I've waited for it to dry. And now I am sanding it and that pretty much fixes up the holes and I can put my paint and primer over the top and you basically won't even tell that there used to be a hole there. So for the gesso I used a few coats just to make sure that it was nice and covered and you couldn't see any of that yellow anymore and I actually sanded a little bit in between the coats as well just to so that it was nice and smooth. Now I haven't actually uh, primed the headstock here as you can see because I am now just taking off the parts for the uh, you know the string thingies. I forget what they're called but I took them off just like I did in my last guitar painting video and it wasn't that hard actually. You just got to make sure that you don't lose any of those pieces because if you do you probably can't put it back together again. But yeah I sanded uh, that after I took those pieces off and now I am adding in some gesso to those areas as well and as you can see now it is nice and ready for me to paint and I've actually masked off uh, the areas of the fretboard and the little uh, part at the bottom that holds the strings and now I am ready to paint. So I had a rough idea of what I wanted to paint. I wanted to make sure that there was uh, water or the ocean at some part in this artwork. But I also wanted some pretty colors in there too. And I decided on a sort of like almost like a sunset sunrise sort of scene with some ocean waves and an animal as well on there <laughs> and I'll let you know what that is later but at the moment I'm just painting in the sky and as you can see it's most predominantly pink I really love the look of uh, a pink sky either sunrise or sunset I forget which one it is but sometimes it happens and I just really really love the look and I really wanted to try and paint that myself and I actually made sure to put a little bit of yellow in there because I just really love the look of the pinks and the yellows sort of mingling together in the clouds it just looks almost magical <laughs> and I did that as well on uh, all over the guitar pretty much because I wanted to put my waves over the top of that and not be too worried about you know uh, like having white parts like showing still so I just pretty much painted sky everywhere and I would worry about uh, where the waves would go after that. It took me a little bit of layering and a little bit of experimenting to figure out the painting style that I wanted to use but I ended up uh, deciding on using a mop brush as you can see here and that was really fun to use with the acrylic paint and um, just like lightly dab it and sort of get these little soft clouds happening and then I would slowly build up layers and then like blend a little bit but then let it dry and then just add layers upon layers slowly moving on to 
the highlights and for the highlights I would mix a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow in there until it was pretty much mostly a pastel uh, yellow color with a tint of pink in there and that would be my uh, lightest highlight of the white and I honestly really love the look of it too it just looks so fun and playful and it's not really realistic honestly and I wasn't really going for realistic anyways I kind of wanted to still have a painterly feel to it and yeah now I'm going in for the water and as you can see here this took me quite a while too because I didn't really have a huge plan going into it I kind of just wanted to paint and just figure it out as I went along and I really enjoyed adding in the greens as you can see here the greens were really fun and I felt like the greens really helped to make it look more like an ocean because like sometimes you'll see like a tinge of green in there it's not always just blue and I felt like that really helped so now after this I decided I wanted to have a lot of like splashy uh, sort of sea foamy elements to this water so I got my mop brush out again and I just lightly dabbed it in the white paint so that the paint was just on the tips and then I would use like a, a speckly dabbing motion on the painting and get this really nice sort of like a uh, speckly foamy kind of texture for the water and I really enjoyed that and I just kept building up layers of like a bit of white here and there and then I would add in a little bit of blue and then I would put white back over the top of that and then I was like mm, I want a little bit more color in there because it was feeling too too white if that makes sense because it's it's water so it's gonna look blue so then I added more blue on the top of that and now as you can see I am painting in the animal that I mentioned earlier have you guessed what animal it is it is a killer whale or most you know known as an orca I love these animals I think that they are beautiful and I I just I really wanted to paint one because I felt like the colors of the black and white would work really well I could add hints of blue and, and stuff to the white areas and then like trying to add hints of pink uh, into the highlights of the black areas and I think it was gonna work out pretty well that's the rough idea I had in my head anyways it did take me quite a bit of layering for that uh, orca because honestly there was quite a bit of texture underneath where I had painted the sky and the water so I really didn't want that to show through too much so I just had to keep layering on that white and the black to make sure it was nice and you know smoother and honestly I have to think about that in the future because like that was a little bit annoying with the texture but you can't really tell too much it's more just like the feeling of having to paint a block color over a lot of texture it I don't know it's just a little bit difficult but I got through in the end and I had a lot of fun with it as well and I think he turned out pretty cute he still needs a few more layers as you can see there's a bit of pink showing through um, on the white areas which I don't mind too much but you can sort of tell that it's from the sky behind so I had to just keep layering on white a bit on there just to sort of make it more crisp and uh, refined looking and then after this I'm adding more white to the sea foam because I just keep layering on blues and uh, greens and then whites and then like sort of blend it out and then like add sort of like paint brushy sort of textures and I just kept uh, just sort of trying to figure out a method that I liked because I didn't plan this too well going into it but I did have a lot of fun and honestly I feel like the sort of messy painterly style works pretty well as well now as you can see I'm going into the back here and I'm, I'm trying to make sure that the waves uh, sort of like go all the way around uh, this like guitar and sort of match up to each other if that makes sense I don't want like a seam where you can tell the painting starts and ends I want you to be able to just turn it around and it's just like a scene in the ocean <laughs> and I don't think these waves really make all too much sense especially if you like put them next to each other they probably don't make a whole lot of sense but I just really wanted to go for an aesthetic sort of purpose not overly like anatomically correct water is that the way you say it anatomically I don't know if water has anatomy but uh, you know more realistic uh, physics I guess you'd say 
Now this is the part where the sea foam where I ended up really liking how it was going because I ended up adding more of that tealy like like a uh, aqua sort of greeny color on there and then I was just like sort of blending it out a little bit and sort of trying to keep it splotchy and then mixing just a little bit of blue through that and then after this I added the white texture over the top of that just to bring back those highlights and honestly I feel like that worked really well because it really helped to uh, put a little bit of depth into those like like big splashes of water and like you can tell that it's it's got a little bit of body to it and with the greens it really feels like the sunlight is shining through that and uh, illuminating some of that water so I think that looks really cool and now I'm just adding in some little birds as you can see here because I just love adding birds to a sky artwork I just think that it ends up looking really cool because it's just like a simple way that you draw birds but then it ends up like like really adding to the whole piece now I wanted to add some water to the neck and the head as you can see here and it's obviously not realistic because why would you have water like flowing in the sky and why would you have water flowing up in a stream through the sky it doesn't make any sense but this is a little bit more of a fantasy uh, interpretation and overall, I'm just really happy with how this turned out. I just think it looks so pretty and the colors are really satisfying to me. And it still has that like sort of messy painterly look to it. But honestly, I think that that helps uh, a lot because it's not just like a, a print on a ukulele. Like you can tell this was a painting, especially looking at the texture of it. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun doing this and it was, it was a little bit of struggle, but I got there in the end and I think the results speak for themselves. So if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe because it really helps me out. And comment below what you think of this artwork and if you have painted on a musical instrument before, I would love to know. Hope you're all having a lovely day. Please stay safe out there and I shall see you in my next video. Bye everyone.